Hello, and welcome back to Stately Vaughn Manor. And today, we're going to talk about Ray Bradbury, the legendary Ray Bradbury, the man who wrote the famous novel Fahrenheit 451. Not going to talk about that today. Uh, all his novels deserve their own individual looks uh, because they were all great. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the foundation of his work, and that was his short stories. He wrote a ton of fantastic short stories. I think he wrote up to about 300, something around there. Hardworking man, wrote every day of his life, pretty much. Uh, Ray Bradbury, uh, born in, when was he born? He was born August 22nd, 1922, in Wokegon, Illinois, which highly, highly influenced everything he wrote. Uh, his childhood and his upbringing and where he grew up. Uh, and we only lost him on June 5th, 2012. It doesn't seem like that long ago, really. Uh, good old Ray Bradbury. A fantastic science fiction, fantasy, and horror writer. Uh, he considered himself a fantasy writer. He said himself he only wrote one science fiction novel, and that was Fahrenheit 451. Everything else, pretty much, was fantasy. Uh, even the Martian Chronicles, he said himself, those couldn't happen. They're fantasy. They're mythic. And myths last. And the Martian Chronicles will last. Uh, and he was right. Uh, Martian Chronicles has lasted. It is now a classic of literature. And that is the first book I'm going to talk about is the Martian Chronicles. Uh, his first breakout collection of short stories. Um... My copy is this beautiful Heritage Edition that came out in 1974. Uh, this, look at that little Martian on there. Uh, this is one of my prized possessions. I love this book and I love this edition. Uh, this was the one with illustrations by Joseph Mugnani. Uh, and it's got some fantastic art in this particular edition. Man, if you're lucky enough to get this, get it. It's just got all kinds of cool, moody illustrations in here. Yeah, this is a good one. And uh, this, this book, The Martian Chronicles, uh, he was thinking about, you know, how am I going to uh, create um, a, a novel kind of thing with just all the short stories that I wrote. And he thought of uh, Sherwood Anderson's Winesburg, Ohio, uh, which is a book that has a bunch of different stories and scenes all taking place in Winesburg, Ohio. And uh, good book all on its own, worth checking out. But he read that and he said, you know what, I can do that. That I can do. And so he came out with the Martian Chronicles, which has a bunch of short stories which he loosely connected uh, into one big book, uh, the story of the colonization by Earth of the planet Mars. Uh, Mars had inhabitants, uh, but you know how, how people are when it comes to colonizing other places. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, a lot of great stories in this book that he uh, organized by the dates of when they were supposed to happen. I don't know if you remember back in 1999 when we started going to Mars. Uh, I think the third expedition, uh, when was when was the third expedition? When did that happen? I'll find out for you. Yeah, that happened in 2000. I don't know if you remember that, but it was a big deal. So back in the 2000 when the third expedition happened. Uh, yeah, it, it goes up from there. Mostly all this stuff happened in the early 2000s. How'd we miss it? Um, Great stuff. Probably the best story in this book, and one of the best stories he ever wrote, uh, which they just call the Third Expedition, is uh, a story called Mars is Heaven, about astronauts that land on the planet Mars, and instead of finding an alien planet, they find a bunch of familiar things. There's my old house. There's my old street. There's my mom. Uh, they find a bunch of uh, very familiar houses and places and people. It's all great. Uh, it's almost too good to be true. Now, you know how, how things go 
when they're too good to be true. Yeah, it goes like that. Not, not good. <laughs> Great story. Fantastic story. He was really good uh, with that type of story. All, a, a lot of his stories, and maybe that's why I love them so much, could have been Twilight Zone episodes. I think only one actually was, but they all could have been. Uh, they're all that kind of story. Um, this book is fantastic, Martian Chronicles. If you have not read it, read this book. It's great. Uh, next great collection of short stories, which everybody knows, just like they know the Martian Chronicles, is The Illustrated Man. This is a great one. Uh, a lot of great stories in this one. Uh, probably the one I think of the most is The Velt, uh, which uh, takes place in a future house that has its own... Uh, well, if you've ever seen Star Trek The Next Generation, you know what a holodeck is. Uh, and you know that things always go wrong on the holodeck. They're just bad things to have. If, if we ever invent them, don't get them. Don't, don't put a holodeck in your house like these poor folks did. But uh, yeah, basically it's a room that uh, can create uh, a three-dimensional scene of any place you want, and it's perfect. And so in this house, they create these different scenes uh, for the entertainment of the household. And one of the scenes is a velt, an African velt with lions and animals. and Things just go horribly wrong, <laughs> as they tend to do in those type of stories. A lot of great stories in here. Um, just, you know, Martian Chronicles, Illustrated Man, just lyrical, beautiful, haunting, terrifying occasional stories. Ray Bradbury wrote a lot in his early days in Weird Tales magazine. Yes, the famous home of H.P. Lovecraft, Robert E. Howard, Clark Ashton Smith, and so many others. Ray Bradbury uh, wrote for that magazine as well and did a bunch of spooky stories for that magazine. And a lot of those were collected in this great book, The October Country. This is my copy of The October Country. Uh, this has a bunch of great stories in it and it has the crowd has the crowd in it. Famously, Ray Bradbury didn't like cars. He didn't like driving in cars. Um, and he was right, because cars kill people. Cars slaughter people. The carnage caused by cars is just insane if you look at the numbers. And he realized that, didn't like cars. And so this whole story is about traffic accidents and a mystery, a horrific mystery uh, surrounding uh, traffic accidents. It's really unique, really great story. You've probably read it because it's been reprinted like a gazillion times, uh, but you could find it in the October Country along with a bunch of other really, really great stories. Uh, this is another standout collection. Uh, another one that I like an awful lot, and this is my, my old copy that apparently I got it, uh, I think it must have been half price books. Um, this is Golden Apples of the Sun. Great old copy there. Look at that cover. That's spooky and cool. Another great collection of short stories. Um, his short stories are great. What's in here? Oh, The Sound of Thunder. The Sound of Thunder. That's a great short story uh, about in the future. Time travel is just a thing in the future, apparently, in this particular story. And it's about a guy who goes back in time. He wants to be a big game hunter and shoot a Tyrannosaurus Rex. What can go wrong? So this is a great, great story that you can find in the Golden Apples of the Sun. Highly recommend that, that story and all of the stories in this book. Fantastic stuff uh, if you've not read it. Now a lot of those uh, you can get individually, uh, but if you, uh, if you really want to invest in something fantastic, you can get the Everyman's Library of the stories of Ray Bradbury. Now this is a magnificent book to get. It's pretty big. How big are you, stories of Ray Brad Bradbury? Because you're Goliath. Yeah, it's a thousand, looks like about a thousand sixty pages long. And all those stories I just talked about, you can find them in here. This just has a ton of stories. I think there are about a hundred stories in here maybe. I could be wrong. I could be totally off my rocker on that. How many stories are in here? If I can ever get to the title page, you know, they don't make it easy in these uh, modern library editions. Oh, it might be. 
That's a ton. Yeah, there's a lot of stories in here. I don't know how many, but it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of stories. And pretty much all the good ones are in here. Yeah, there's Sound of Thunder. Um, yeah, Mars is Heaven. There Will Come Soft Rains. Beautiful lyrical story. Uh, exorcism. Um, yeah, there's there's some great ones in here. Um, so if you if you if you just want to really uh, deep dive into Ray Bradbury, this is a great book to get. It's absolutely fantastic. The stories of Ray Bradbury. One stop shopping there because you can get the Mars stories. I don't think you can get all of them, but you can get a lot of them. Uh, a bunch of the other stories which were in the other books. You can get them in this book. I mean, his stories are completely unique. Um, they're, they're just fascinating. He is, again, like so many other writers, a man of his time. Uh, the thing that's, there's a couple things that stand out, particularly if you read these stories. He was totally against racism. He knew racism was completely wrong. But in his dealings with racism in his story, and it could be because he was writing these in the you know, in the 1950s and early 60s. Um, they were clumsy. They were a bit clumsy. They were a little awkward to read now. Um, but his heart was in the right place, and you can see that. Uh, as far as society is concerned, uh, his depictions of women were mostly of, as wives. Um, you know, it was bare, very... 1950s version of family dynamics and uh yeah not a lot of not a lot of main characters are women all the all the astronauts are men all the main characters are men women are all women are all daughters and wives pretty much um yeah so it's really that kind of 1950s thing so totally expect the mad mad men view uh of the sexes when you when you go into this book Again, when he grew up, where he grew up, well, I guess you can't expect too much more than that. Um, but other than that, uh, he was uh, pretty pretty farsighted. He, he thought a lot about things. Uh, he thought a lot about technology. I get the feeling that he was both really interested and fascinated in, in technology and terrified of it. Uh, he was afraid of the consequences of technology. He, he was afraid that technology could become dehumanizing. Famously, as he got older, he hated the internet. <laughs> you know, he hated that kind of thing. He hated ebooks and the internet. He wouldn't let his stories become ebooks as long as he was alive. They all are now, now that he's gone. But that was just his attitude. Uh, in his older years, he became one of those super right wing guys uh, who was always going on about. Uh, political correctness and all that. Eh, whatever. I judge him for his stories. I judge him for his work. And his work was fantastic. I mean, if you, you probably have read some Ray Bradbury stories, but I urge you to take a deeper look any chance you get. He was just an incredible talent. Influenced so much of what you see now. Uh, a uniquely American writer and really really worth your time so there you go the stories of ray bradbury thanks for sitting while i went on and on i appreciate it as always i appreciate your support uh, i've got some other videos coming up i'm gonna do uh reviews of the first couple Murderbot books i'm going to be talking about the phantom of the opera i think i promised a bunch of other videos that i'm gonna do i never shut up and i appreciate you listening to me Okay, so until next time, thank you for visiting me here at Stately Bond Manor.